Today we're going to take a look at the Amazing Spider-Man and Villain Roundup plug and play from Jack's Pacific that was released in 2006. The controller is a joystick, which is the best design for a plug and play because the section reserved for the batteries is normally quite large and obtrusive. With the joystick model, they can stack it underneath the controller where you won't notice it. The spiderweb design is a fitting pattern that looks great, but unfortunately it has a rather large plastic figure that seems like it's only there to get in your way. It serves no purpose, but thankfully it isn't that much of a nuisance. But all that was really needed to show the Spider-Man brand was a small mask or web logo. The buttons and stick are well made and I never felt like they were bringing me in the wrong direction or that they were not responding. Four AA batteries power the controller which has a very generous cord length of 7 feet, but unfortunately it only supports mono sound output like most Jack specific plug and play products. Though Spider-Man will save your high scores, it won't save your game progress. Overall this controller is built and controls well. Bank Strike. The Kingpin is robbing all the banks of New York. Stop him and rescue the hostages. Bank Strike is the flagship game of the unit. It's the one that has you swinging around in a fairly open area and feels just like a Spider-Man game should. Unfortunately, it's not as open as other home console and handheld games, but you do swing and climb walls with ease. Spider-Man goes through five banks to stop the Kingpin from robbing them. On the way, you free hostages and take out criminals while swinging and exploring. Swinging feels very fluid, but because some objects are in the background and some are in the foreground, it's very easy to misjudge an object's position and get stopped completely. Avoid spikes and lasers while collecting power-ups, including first aid kits, shields, and extra lives, as you find the most efficient way to take down enemies and navigate the levels. As you save the hostages, you will be given different colored keys that will open the door of the same color. Once you've gone through all the rooms and saved the hostages, you'll enter the vault and fight the Kingpin. Bank Strike is an overall fun game to play as the mechanics work well. The bottom left corner shows you how many hostages you have left to find, and the bottom right corner shows you the current color key that you've acquired. These indicators make playing the game a lot less annoying. The biggest issues are the difficulty in accurately climbing around corners, the faulty pickup distance of items, wasting health kits by being able to pick them up when you already have full health, and the fact that you fight the same exact boss at the end of every level. The game is also quite short at only being 5 levels long. Fortunately, none of these issues really take away from how fun it is to play. Arcade's Playland Arcade has trapped Spider-Man in his deadly playland, helps Spidey escape by defeating Arcade's deadly robots and traps. Arcade's Playland is a twin-stick arcade-style shooter that's very similar to Robotron or Smash TV. In the previously mentioned games, one stick controls the direction that you move and the other controls the direction that you shoot. The big difference here is that there's only a single joystick, so you lose the use of independent actions. Playland takes you through numerous rooms spanning three stages. Many waves of enemies come out of four doors and they all need to be destroyed before moving on to the next room. In the final room of each stage lies the boss of the level. As you progress, the speed of the game increases and level hazards are introduced like floor spikes and mines. Just like Smash TV, there are multiple upgrades to collect including a 3-way shot, a bomb, a shield, a speed boost, and extra lives. The saving grace of this game is being able to shoot your web at an enemy and swing them around in circles to kill them and anything else in the way. This feature isn't only funny but it works so well that it actually would be a great addition to Smash TV. Another nice feature is available if you're able to correctly time your punches. You can deflect enemies' projectiles back at them and stopping you from taking damage. Smash TV is one of my favorite games ever made and although this one uses the same formula, it doesn't come close to what it's attempting to imitate. It lacks the humor, the speed, the controls, the co-op, the on-screen map, the completely absurd art direction, the huge and multi-layered stage bosses, and most importantly, the pleasure dome. The game is competent enough, but Playland doesn't really begin to pick up until the third stage, and even though there are only three stages, it does feel like it drags on forever. You'll just be wishing that you were playing Smash TV. Unless, of course, you only own the Game Gear version. And then you'll wish you were playing literally anything else. 
Building Blaze. A fire is spreading through New York helps Spider-Man save all the innocent people trapped inside. Building Blaze uses the same mechanics of Bank Strike except it has a smaller game environment to navigate through. Blaze has Spider-Man swinging, crawling, and sliding through a burning building while attempting to save the people trapped inside before it collapses. As you explore, the path behind you is constantly being closed off by crumbling and falling ceilings and floors. You are often presented with multiple paths and it is very easy to choose a direction and quickly realize that it was the wrong one. Once a path is blocked, you can't ever go back to explore or save the trapped people. Building Blaze also introduces a timer to the gameplay which really doesn't do it any favors. We still have the counter in the bottom corner to see how many people we've saved, however it only shows you how many people are trapped in the level and not how many rescues are actually needed to move on to the next stage. Since you can't backtrack, if you don't carefully plan out your route, you won't rescue enough people in the later stages. One of the issues with being careful is that it takes time and you will constantly be fighting with the clock. Sure, you can pick up time bonuses, extra lives, extra health, and a shield, but the insufficient amount of saved people is what will end your game more than anything else. Building Blaze unfortunately does the opposite of what was needed to enhance the experience of Bank Strike. The environment needed to get bigger, not smaller. I understand what the developers were trying to do here, and the stages look great. Simulating a burning building requires all the elements that we have in the game, especially to create tension, but for whatever reason, this final product here just doesn't do that. Building Blaze is an interesting idea and controls fine, however the constant blocking off of the level just makes the game very frustrating. Comic Book Shuffle. Slide the portraits of the many famous Spider-Man allies and villains into their correct position. Comic Book Shuffle is the obligatory puzzle game of the lot. It's a falling block style game, but instead of having to connect lines, colors, or shapes, you are piecing together four paint portraits of Spider-Man characters. You can move your cursor up, down, left, and right to choose a tile, hold the A button to slide a tile, and press B to activate your spider power. Complete a picture of Spider-Man swinging and you'll remove all pieces on the screen of a selected type. Complete the picture of Spider-Man's spider sense and you'll slow down the falling blocks. Or complete a picture of Spider-Man's web and you'll be able to swap pieces that are not touching each other. One issue with moving the pieces is that if there is no block occupying a spot in the immediate direction that you want to move, then you lose the option to shift the block to that space. So depending on how the pieces fall, sometimes you're going to have to take a long way around. Your score multiplier will increase by constantly switching between solving pictures of allies and villains which can be accumulated up to a max of 16 times. Comic Book Shuffle is a unique idea that does add something new to the falling block genre, and with time it will really grow on you, but unfortunately the idea of completing pictures slows the game down considerably. When comparing this to other falling block games like the Tetris or Puyo series, it will never be at their speed. The biggest issue that I have with this game is that as levels progress and continue to speed up, there are more and more portraits introduced into the set of falling blocks. You'll eventually learn which four pieces complete the images, but at first you might not understand which is an enemy and which is an ally. Complete the incorrect portrait type and your multiplier will be immediately reset to 1. Incendiary Antics the Green Goblin is out causing havoc on the streets of New York. Help Spider-Man stop him and his henchmen by covering them with web. Incendiary Antics is a shooting gallery style game similar to Wild Guns or NES Punisher. Instead of killing a set number of enemies and bosses, this game requires you to escort a certain number of civilians to safety. If one gets shot by an enemy, gets shot by you, or has a bomb explode near them, they will run away in the opposite direction. Once you meet your quota, the ambulance takes off and the level ends. Enemies shoot and throw bombs at you from low and high and the Green Goblin flies back and forth on the screen doing the same. Shoot a bomb that is in the air and it will stop it from detonating. You have unlimited web but limited health. Thankfully there are shields, first aid kits, bombs, and extra lives to aid you. All of which are dropped during the Green Goblin raids. The three different objects in the foreground are used for cover. This might not seem very useful in the beginning, but after about level 20, you'll constantly be rolling between them to avoid being hit by the onslaught of enemy attacks. While Incendiary Antics isn't a bad game, it just gets repetitive and completely overstays its welcome. There are four slightly different revolving stages and all of them lack any atmosphere or sense of adventure like Wild Guns or NES Punisher. The control is great and the difficulty increases slowly from level to level, however there are no bosses which really hurts the experience. Even though the game gets quite difficult and you'll have to constantly be on your toes, Incendiary Antics will begin to drag after 22 same-ish levels.
As far as plug and plays go, the Amazing Spider-Man and Villain Roundup is great. The design and construction of the controller is excellent. Too many Jack specific products will annoy you just due to an awful D-pad or joystick. If you're looking for a plug and play to try out that has multiple games spanning multiple genres and you're a fan of Spider-Man, then you can't go wrong here. Some plug and plays have bad games and good controllers or vice versa. While none of these games are particularly amazing, pardon the pun, they are interesting enough to play through. The five games are a nice mix, touching on different genres, and there's enough quality content here to keep you happily playing for quite a while. I fully recommend the Amazing Spider-Man and Villain Roundup. Getting your nerd on, getting your nerd on, getting your nerd on. I got a raging nerd on.